So tonight, I had mentioned on Sunday when we were having our Easter service, how many know it was one of the most wonderful Easter services yes. we've ever had? In Amen. It was wonderful. Amen. Pastor Jesse and I worked tirelessly for about three weeks while we were moving, putting the Easter service together. Yes. And there were certain things that we had to do because it involved videos, it involved communication with Cassidy and Art. It was back and forth trying to put this together and that together. And, and then we had to put an itinerary together because even though it looks easy, oh, we have breakfast. It all has to be all planned out. You got to have your little announcements during breakfast. You got to have all these things going. And then, of course, the help team st stepped in. Mr. Carmelo was serving in the back. And, and then we had to host. And then we had, there's so many things that the pastors have to do. And, and on Easter, it was so wonderful because we didn't expect, we had our first breakfast before church. Our first breakfast. Amen. And we thought it was just going to be the helps team. We thought well, helps team, maybe a few people. But it ended up being a lot of people <laughs> coming for the fellowship breakfast. Amen. And we just had a good time together. That's what it's all about. It's about having good times in the Lord, but also understanding that we still reverence the house of God. That's right. And we just had a blast. And it was more than what we expected. And we just thank God for the, the prayers that were answered Amen. for the people coming to receive what God had for them on Easter Sunday. Can, I, can somebody say amen? Amen. So in the midst of all that, I announced that we were going to have corporate prayer tonight because Pastor Delisa had a snafu on the announcements. <laughs> it wasn't corporate prayer tonight, but I had a little snafu because I had been doing so much that I announced corporate prayer and it wasn't corporate prayer because Pastor Jesse and I had a message and a series planned. And the series we had a plan, but we said it's going to be after Easter. And so I had forgotten, and so I announced corporate prayer, and it was the wrong announcement. So, but I didn't want to email all of y'all and tell y'all I made a mistake. I just waited till I tell y'all in person. So y'all can make fun of me while I'm here. <laughs> in person, amen. So no, it's not corporate prayer tonight, but we're going to have a message because Pastor Jesse and I have been sitting on this message for quite some time. Hallelujah. And it's a message you're probably not going to hear very often. No. You've heard maybe portions of it. But this series, you won't hear a lot about this series being preached in a lot of places. So tonight, thank God the weather was held back for us to get yes. here tonight. So we, we could have this message go forth. So the title tonight is, are y'all ready? Everybody's ready. Okay. What are sheep, goats, wolves, and sheepdogs? Oh, let's try that one again. What are sheep? Goats, wolves, and sheepdogs. Amen. At first, it sounds like Animal Kingdom, right? It sounds like you're about to watch Animal Planet. Hallelujah. But in the Word of God, these four analogies are used to describe the different people in the body of Christ. That's right. The Bible says in Psalm 95, 7, For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Amen. Tonight, you're going to understand why Jesus use the sheep analogy to describe his true believers. Are y'all ready to get that understanding? Yeah. We're going to take you a little deeper tonight, and we're going to talk about sheep. We may not get to the goats tonight because, honey, no, we're not in a hurry. We're doing a series, and we want you all to be blessed this evening. Amen. Amen. So we're going to take our time through the Word of God and have the Holy Ghost, he's the teacher, thank God he's in charge, yeah. give you an understanding about sheep tonight and why Jesus used that analogy concerning his true believers. Are y'all ready? Yes. Amen. It may not be long, but it's going to be strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm, go with me to Psalm 23. And when you go to Psalm 23, you're going to know where I'm going. That's right. And y'all are going to, you probably know this particular psalm by heart. We're going to read it in the NLT, which is what we have here tonight. But I'm also going to quote it from the King James, just a quote, because that's how we've learned it over the years. We learned it through the King James. So when we go back to read it in the New Living Translation, it's going to sound a little different, although it still means the same thing. Amen. What are sheep, goats, wolves, and sheepdogs? <laughs> Y'all are going to love this teaching. This was a very special teaching that Pastor Jesse and I came across years ago. And we've been sitting on this teaching for quite some time, oh, Pastor. And, Amen. But we're excited to bring this to you for a series for our Wednesday nights. Y'all are going to enjoy this, and y'all are going to learn something. Is everybody there at Psalm 23? Yes. All right. We're at verse 1. Are we there? Let's read it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The King James says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. And we're going to, the teacher's here tonight. And the teacher is back in the pulpit. How many evangelists were here? Amen. We're evangelizing for a while. Now we're back in the teaching position. The, the office of the teacher is stepping forward um, tonight. And then the Wednesdays to come. So the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What does that really mean? How many know that sheep recognize their shepherd and realize their need for the shepherd? Amen. I'm going to say that again. True sheep recognize their shepherd and realize their need for the shepherd. How many know sheep without a shepherd cannot take care of themselves? Sheep without a shepherd, they cannot take care of themselves. And a sheep without a shepherd will die. That's right. Amen? Amen? So the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I shall not want. You won't want, they won't want for anything because they realize the shepherd is going to take care of them. Amen. This is Jesus referring to us as sheep. Verse 2. He lets me rest in green meadows. Now, it sounds a little different than the King James. It says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. How many know lying down is a term, uh, you can use it as a form of submission. When sheep lie down, there's a form of submission. Think about your puppies. How many of you have dogs at home? Or, you, or I mean, even if your dogs, like, come around strangers, and then you pet the pet, because we love dogs, and we see them at, at where we live, and we just love dogs. Oh, my gosh, we love dogs. We don't have a dog, but we love dogs. And so the dog comes around, and we, we kind of get friendly with the dog, right? And the dog, we, we pet him and pet him, and we say, oh, and then he rolls out on his back. And then you pet his belly, and he's all excited. What does that, what does that dog laying on his back mean, allowing you to pet his belly? It means he's, it's a form of submission. That's right. The sheep, it says here, he lets me rest in green meadows. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. The sheep... Don't mind being submissive to the shepherd. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sheep are very submissive. As a matter of fact, watch the next verse. It says here, he leads me beside peaceful streams. The King James says, he leads me beside still waters. Hallelujah. Sheep, <laughs> we're talking about sheep. Sheep are gentle. Sheep are quiet. Sheep are peaceful. Sheep are non-aggressive. Sheep are innocent. And they don't give their shepherd a lot of problems. Woo! Wow. Amen. Those are the true sheep. Y'all going to continue loving this because this was so much revelation knowledge that came through this particular, this particular passage of Scripture. So, he lets me rest in green meadows, makes me to lie down in green pastures. How many know sheep don't mind grazing in the pasture? They graze in the pasture. As a matter of fact, they're happy in the pasture where they are. Amen. And they graze. And they eat. And then they feed on the grass all day long. And they feed. And, and they, love the, they love to feed. And they, and they don't want to miss a feeding. Y'all get where I'm coming from? Amen. True Amen. sheep don't want to miss a meeting. Amen. Sheep don't want to miss their feeding. Hallelujah. Amen. And they're happy grazing in the pasture. As long as the shepherd allows them. Amen? Are you all enjoying this? Yes. Amen. So sheep are peaceful. They're not aggressive. They're beside still waters. And they don't give their shepherd a lot of problems. Thank God for the sheep. We need the sheep in the body of Christ, don't we? That's right. Verse 3. Now watch this. It says here, he renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to his name. You'll know it like this. The King James says, he restores my soul. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness, righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. <laughs> what is it about the sheep? The sheep are willing. And you know, sheep like to be led. Amen. They don't mind following the shepherd. And they don't fight their shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those are sheep. They also don't like to be around a lot of chaos going on in the animal kingdom. They don't like all that. Amen. 
because they're very docile animals. Very docile. Do you know how submissive they are? Do you know that the shepherd at times and seasons, they had to shear their wool? Y'all ever heard of that? Yeah. Their wool gets so big and so thick. Do you know that if they fall into the waters that they could drown because their, their, their wool was so thick? So they had to be sheared. You ever taken a child to get a haircut? They didn't want to get a haircut. <laughs> I have a haircut. You, I'm sure y'all y'all have done that. It's very very you know it's it's not funny, but I mean it's because I used to work in the hair salon, so I used to see it all the time. The, the, the sheep they don't react. They just let the shepherd just shear their wool because if they don't get if they, they don't allow the shepherd to shear that wool at times, that sheep will become unbalanced and unhealthy. Oh, wow. They need their wool to be sheared, and they allow the shepherd to do it. Wow. That's how submissive they are. That's We're compared to sheep. Y'all get the analogy yes. tonight? Watch this. It says, even when I walk, verse 4, through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect yes. and comfort me. Verse 4 even says this in the King James. It says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now we hear this, we hear this particular uh, passage, of, passage of scripture in funerals quite a bit. But you probably never heard it broken down like this before. Maybe you may have, but I'm just saying not often. Even when I walk, or yeah, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What does it say in King James? I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff protect and comfort me. The sheep knows that their shepherd is going to take care of them. Amen. Amen. The sheep knows that that rod, you know, when that sheep begins to go this way, the, sheep, the rod comes out and says, no, 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 come back this way. Amen. That's what a good pastor does. Amen. When the sheep begins to go left, the shepherd goes, oh, we've got to come back over here. Amen. 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 When the sheep begins to go out of the flock, who runs after the sheep? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The shepherd really is Jesus, but you can also take it into who's the representatives for Jesus today. Yes. The pastors, the under shepherds, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, if they're in a local church. Some of them travel and they go from church to church, but the local church pastors. Those are the under shepherds. When they see a sheep go, the pap, people think the pastor is supposed to go run after the sheep. Got to make sure. I got, got pastor. Why don't you run after that sheep? Why don't you go out and, and try to try to grab them? Why don't you go out and try to call them and and try to send them messages? That, because that's the Holy Spirit's job. Amen. 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 We only do so much, and then the Holy Spirit says you have to back up because. You get, I mean, in my early pastor, my early pastor years, I used to do that a little bit, but found out that wasn't the healthiest thing for the pastor, the under shepherds to do. Amen. The Lord said, no. He says, you allow me to go get the sheep. I'll get Amen. them by the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost does it, it's so much more powerful than if flesh does it. Amen. You try, we had a pastor say, you try to love somebody outside of the flesh or try to love somebody in the flesh, you're going to fail. If you love somebody um, by the Holy Ghost, you're going to win. Amen. Amen. we got to rely on the Holy Spirit because this flesh is weak. Amen. And flesh will fail us every time, right? right. Yeah. So the sheep know they're going to be protected. They're going to be comforted by the shepherd. The sheep know that that rod comes out. They know, oh, I better get back in line. I better listen and, and submit to the shepherd. Because you know why? Because the sheep know the shepherd's voice. Oh, yeah. Amen. The Amen. sheep know the shepherd's voice. I can tell you, I hear something, and I don't even question it no more. You know, when you're young in the Lord, or when you're young as a pastor years and years ago, you question things because you're not sure. But as you grow as a pastor, the Lord always makes sure that as we've grown, when he shows us something, we don't doubt it no more. Amen. We don't doubt it no more because he confirms that that's what he's showing us. And that we need to know these things so we can pray for the flock. Amen. And lead the flock correctly. Amen. Amen. 
So the sheep know the shepherd's voice. When I hear something on television, or when I hear something on the radio, or when I hear something, or, or when uh, somebody presents something maybe on social media, you know the shepherd's voice. And a stranger's voice, I'm like, oh, that's stranger, stranger danger. That's not the Lord. <laughs> How do you know this? Let's go to, let's go to John. It's good to be a sheep. Amen. It's good to be a sheep. Are we there, John? Let's go to John chapter 10. And I want you to go start at verse 4. John chapter 10, verse 4. So it says here, and if you're there, just look up so I can know you're there. Now watch this. Remember the sheep, they're comforted, they're protected, they're submissive, they know that the shepherd's going to take care of them. Remember that without a shepherd, they will die. They need the shepherd. And they know the shepherd's voice. Watch this, verse 4. After he, who's he? Jesus. Jesus, has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. I'm going to repeat that. After he gathers his own flock, he walks ahead of them. How many know the true flock, the true believers, the true sheep know how to submit and to follow Jesus? Amen. And it says here, he walks ahead of them. There's nothing worse as a Christian, nothing worse than to be and get ahead of God. It's one of the worst things a Christian can do. The Christian, we have seen probably since 20 years, Christians that got ahead of God and they wanted to do things too soon and they end up in a backslidden state and they can't get back to where they were because they weren't ready to be at the front lines and what they were thinking that God called them to do. That's right. They weren't ready. And the, and the powers of darkness, they don't understand mm. that this position here comes with a price. Amen. It just comes with a price. Yes. I've lost half my hair, <laughs> but, I, but I'm laughing about it. So I, I've lost half my hair. It's, it, it tries to grow back. It does. It doesn't. Oh, well, I'll just put a wig on if I have to. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I take my vitamins. <laughs> I try to get my hair back, but oh, well. And it's not a stress. It just comes with a price. Amen. We're at the front lines, and 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 it comes with a price. Amen. The 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 front line men. It's like you're when they send the front line out in the one of the infantries. The front line goes first. They're the ones that get killed first. If they're you know they're at war and they're on the ground, boots on the ground, they're gonna get it first. We're at the front lines, so there's a price that comes with this type of. It's not about a getting on position. It's all wonderful. This comes with a price. You've got to be ready for the attacks and the darts and the fiery terrors that come through the enemy because we are at the front lines and we are entrusted with a flock here at the Hand of God Ministry. Amen. That's why we ask you to pray for us. Amen. Pray for us with all diligence. The way we pray for you all, and we pray for you all interceding. Now we live in a house so we can, we can get loud and crazy <laughs> in the Holy Ghost. We can pray in the Spirit really loud and nobody's going to hear us. And we're interceding for all you wonderful people here. Amen. All of you. And Thank some people you. that are not here. Thank we're interceding. You. And we're bombarding heaven for you. Will you do the same for us? Can you pray yes. 15, 20 minutes for us and lift Amen. us up and lift this ministry up? Amen. We need the sheep. We need true sheep to help. So there's nothing worse than a sheep getting ahead of his shepherd. Whoever heard of a sheep leading a shepherd? Who ever heard of that? You have, can you picture? I want you to picture the sheep leading the shepherd. <laughs> you know, leading the shepherd. Yeah, I don't know where the, you know, they say sheep are not super smart. Not to say that Jesus was saying that we were dumb, but how many know flesh can be dumb? Amen. Right. Flesh, we all carry it. We can make some not good decisions. <laughs> how many know sin is can make us dumb? Right. Sin makes people a little not, not too smart. Because sin comes in and we don't make good decisions when people when we're in sin, right? Come on, gotcha. So Jesus compares us to sheep. That's why it's important to follow the shepherd as a sheep. Right now, in this day and age, we have too many shepherds letting the sheep dictate to the shepherd how to run their churches. That's it. That's it. 
And she and, and the shepherds are following the sheep. Anything they want, anything they want. They want this ministry, they get that ministry. They want this to be done, oh, it's going to be done. They want this to be happening at the church, this is what's going to happen. They want this, you give them that. We're not popular because that's not the kind of church God called us to. I wish, I have no convictions, I wish that Pastor Jess and I could just run a church the way everybody else runs it. I wish we could do that. But we can't because of the convictions are too strong. And, and the Lord has us um, so submitted to him Amen. that if we do something that's not, we're going to get in trouble. Amen. So we're not going to be popular. And in this day and age, we're not going to go along with all the other churches. It's getting worse. I mean, like it's like a nightclub. The churches are becoming like nightclubs. I mean, you all, can, you all know because you all have been around. You all know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. So we stay small. Hey, we preach the word. We may not have a lot here, but we are rich in spirit here. Amen. Why? Because he's first. Amen. And we're not ashamed to preach Jesus. We're not ashamed to have a cross on our stage. Either. Amen. We're not ashamed to have and, and lift his name up and talk about what he's done for us, even when it's not Easter. Amen. We're not ashamed. We're not ashamed of him. We don't deny him. He won't deny us before the Father. Amen. We, how do we deny him today? How do the shepherds deny him today? They deny him by not even presenting him to the body of Christ, right. the flock that God has given those under shepherds. Yeah. Amen. Right. So we're the body of Christ is in trouble because sheep are saying, bah, we want this, we want that, and then the shepherd's doing whatever the sheep want so they can grow the church. That's where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So it's getting more like a club. It's getting more like, you know, it, it, it's getting worse and worse. And, and it doesn't seem to be getting better, but that's prophecy coming to pass. That's, right. that's in the book of Revelation. We're in the church of Laodicea and age. Mm -hmm. And that's the last church that's mentioned in the book of Revelation. After that, the rapture. So we're in the last days. <laughs> Nothing else has to happen. Hallelujah. I just can't wait. Amen. I keep saying I don't want to see anybody pass away. I just want us all to go be in the rapture. Yes. Amen. No more passing away. <laughs> I don't want to go through no more of that. Just everybody go in the rapture together. Amen. Holding hands, singing, <laughs> singing the Lord's songs. Amen. Amen. That's what I like. But I want to follow the Lord while I'm here. Amen. I followed the Lord, Pastor Jesse and I. We were sheep for a long time, a long, long time. And believe me, we wanted to stay sheep. We didn't want to be a sheep, under shepherd. <laughs> Trust me, we didn't want to be under shepherd. We wanted to be sheep. We wanted to be a sheep and just be in a church and just be sheep and just. Bye, and just follow the, the under shepherd. But the Lord said, no, I got to call you. I said, no, when we're 60, we'll go be a, we'll have a church. The Lord said, no, I'm calling you now. Oh, no. But you know what? I'm so glad you did. Amen. Because we've never been happier. Since we've got into our internship, we've never been happier. Amen. Being in ministry. Amen. So we didn't get ahead of God. We were trying to stay behind God. And God said, no, I'm, I'm pulling you forward. I got to bring you to the front lines because these are the last days. So he said here, after he gathered his own flock, he walks ahead. It's chapter 10, verse 4. It says here, he walks ahead of them, and they followed him because they know his voice. How many know sheep? Jesus said they'll follow the shepherd. Amen. True sheep follow. Amen. True sheep stay in line. True sheep are submissive. It says, verse 5, watch this. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Amen. I don't know if y'all know this about sheep, but sheep are experts in discerning the voice of their shepherd. Come on. Amen. I'm going to say that again because ooh, Amen. Well, know it. <laughs> sheep are experts in discerning the voice of their shepherd. Amen. Well, pastor, how do you become an expert? How many know when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a measure of discernment that comes upon you. Yes. It's a little sharper, a little keener than when you were without Jesus. You're able to discern a little bit of evil from good. Then as you mature, your discernment gets a little bit keener and a little bit sharper. But when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, you are now open Amen. to move in the gift or to have the gift of discernment, Amen. which we have. Pastor Jesse and myself Amen. didn't ask for it, didn't go seeking for it, didn't say, "Oh, I got to have all the gifts because I want to have all the gifts for my ministry." That we didn't ask for it. We didn't. We didn't even. All we knew is that we could prophesy a little bit, and he could prophesy a lot. I could prophesy just a little. <laughs> that's all I knew. Amen. Okay, a little prophecy. Okay, that's good. Well, we got a little more gifts. Why? Because we stayed in the Word of God. Amen. How does your discernment get sharp? 
How do you become an expert in discerning between good and evil? You got to get into his word. Amen. And not just read the word. Oh, let me see. Then they cursed him and said, You are his disciple. You got to study the word. That means you have to have commentaries. We have two rooms now of shelves with commentaries. So all the books that we have, they complement the Bibles and the breakdowns. Whether it be um, any Bible we have here, a commentary is one the ones we promote because we know what they say. And they all say the same thing. They may say it a little different, but they're all saying the same thing. I mean, no, the Holy Spirit speaks the same Amen. thing throughout time. And any new message you hear that doesn't, you're like, I don't understand that message because it's not from God. Right. And it's a stranger's voice, and we don't follow. Amen. True sheep don't follow strange voices. Amen. Amen. So they won't follow a stranger, the sheep. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Sheep are experts in discerning the, shep discerning the shepherd's voice. I know some of you, the Lord's dropped some discernment on you. But the Lord said he wants to take you to a, a little bit of a higher place in your discernment. He wants to increase that gift in you. And the only way it increases is, number one, yes, when you read the word of God and you study it. And you've got to just devour it. And you've got to receive the Holy Spirit to lead you even through that. Because you need the Holy Spirit to have understanding in the word of God. The second thing is what I'm doing right now. How do you increase your discernment? When you are sitting under the word of God, like you are tonight, when you're hearing the word of God and you're receiving it, that word of God is being planted in you here tonight. And then what, what it does, it helps with increase in your discernment. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. The third thing is when the under shepherd, maybe in the counseling, has a word for you. Or maybe in moving in the gifts of the spirit has a word for you through prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. That's another way that uh, the discernment can come and that you can receive and know that you're hearing the shepherd's voice. So how was those three again, Pastor? Spend time in his word to know the shepherd's voice. How are you going to know his voice if you don't know what he says? <laughs> See, some of us get a lot of prayer happening, but we don't get a lot of word happening. And so when you get a lot of prayer and you don't do no word, it, 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 it causes a, an off balance. It causes a little bit of a loopiness, a little bit of a weirdness that can come upon the Christian. Amen. So you need both. You need the word. So that way when you pray, you have a foundation because the word of God is the one. The heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall remain forever. Amen. Right? Right. Amen. So you need the word of God to give you balance. You can't do all prayer and no word. You can't do all word and no prayer. You need both. Amen. Little prayer, little power. Amen. Much prayer, much power. Amen. Little word, little foundation, cracked foundation. More word, strong foundation. Amen. Come on. Yes. So when things come at you or things happen to you, your foundation is strong and you're able to withstand. That's a good sheep. That's what a sheep does. You can discern and be an expert in discerning between good and evil in your life. In, in whatever whatever the Lord you know, tells you or in any situation or circumstance. You Amen. can discern between good and evil. Now watch this. We're going to uh, jump over to uh, verse... Uh, let's go to verse 25. So Jesus is telling them, I have already told you and you don't believe me. He says, and you don't believe me. The proof is the work I do in my Father's name. But you don't believe me because you're not my sheep. Hallelujah. How many know that there's a influx of under shepherds that skipped being a sheep? <laughs> How about to say it? There is a lot of under shepherds today that just skipped right over being a sheep. That they got saved and they didn't want to do the sheep. They didn't want to graze in the pasture. They didn't want to let their wool be sheared. They didn't want to be led by the uh, shepherd. They didn't want to be, they didn't want the rod coming out to tell them what to do or to, to pull them in. They didn't want any of that. So they skipped over being the sheep and they wanted to go right into being an under shepherd. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> As a matter of fact, You'll die. <laughs> spiritually speaking, you'll die. And maybe physically, but I'm saying more spiritually. You, you've got to understand that the sheep, being a sheep is so important. I love being a sheep. 
Amen. If you ask my, my pastors, or even ask, because uh, he was my friend at the time, but if you ask our pastors what kind of sheep we were, we were good behaved sheep, Sister Patty. We, I think we were like favorites at the time. I, would, I can say that. <laughs> because we were good sheep. We were, we were teachable. And we had three pastors. Can you imagine? Two is hard enough. Get three. Get three. <laughs> Come on. I'm telling you stuff. So. Right, Sister Patty? And, and she knows because we got, we, we got offended quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> the rod would come out, the correction. And we spent our ministry, our, well, I said ministry, our sheep time getting offended a lot. It was like boot camp, but Amen. but I understand now. At the time, I would get get a little upset sometimes, but I wouldn't. I would just pray. I said, "Lord, don't let me get upset because I got to be okay because I know the pastor's no better than me." But I had to learn how to be a sheep. Amen. I had to learn how to be submissive. Amen. I had to learn to not think I knew it all because that's what happened. I went there. We went there. We came from a big church, went to a small church, and we knew more. Well, we didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we learned how to be a good sheep. Through a few of the rods, a few of the lessons, a few wool shearings that we had to go through, we learned how to be sheep. We learned how to follow so that one day we could learn how to lead. Amen. If you don't know how to follow, you're never going to learn how to lead. Amen. Never. If you, God will never use someone who doesn't know how to follow. That's right. Never use anybody like that. You can't. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. He says... But you don't believe me because you're not my sheep. Now watch, I love this part, verse 25. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. Oh, that's good. He goes, I know them, and they follow me. Mm -hmm. How many know you all follow us because we follow Jesus? Yeah. You don't follow us because you worship us. By no means. We don't, we don't give glory to ourselves. Even, even on Easter Sunday, um, it's tempting to give glory to a lot of flesh and entertainment. But we did everything the way the Holy Ghost told Amen. us. We still had some form of entertainment with breakfast and pictures. We had, I mean, we were very professionally done. Thank God for our pastor yes. doing that for us. Um, we had a form of that, but we don't go overboard. We still want to have fun in church, but you still want to put Jesus first. Amen? Amen. So the sheep listen to my voice, verse 25. I know them and they follow me. And watch this. I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. Amen. Mm -hmm. We will never perish as long as we remain to be true sheep. Amen. As long as we stay in the fold and enjoy the pastures that the shepherd has provided and the grass that he's provided, Amen. we will never perish. Amen. We got to know the voice of our shepherd. We got to yield to the voice of our shepherd. And he'll use the shep under shepherds that are before you. Amen. Amen. Because that is the order of the church. Jesus cannot be here with your so you can see him with your natural eye. But we are his representatives. Every office, past, pastor especially because they stay in their local churches mostly. But under shepherds, we are his representatives. So we're the under shepherds. So we take the place of the physical. We're just yielded vessels. But we take the place because Jesus is not physically here. But he says, I'm giving, I mean, I'm giving you the five offices, the government of the church, the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, Amen. to equip the saints for service. Amen. It's good to be sheep. Yes. We need the sheep. Yes. Now, we're not going to talk about goats tonight because we're going to save that one because that's a good one. Y'all are going to enjoy that one too. But she has a party. So sheep... Remember, are submissive. They're not aggressive. Amen. They don't mind being led. They don't get stubborn. They don't mind being led. They don't mind being sheared. They don't mind, or they don't give their shepherd a hard time. Mm -hmm. They don't cause a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. They don't cause, they don't like problems. That's the sheep. That's why Jesus compared us to sheep. Because he wanted us to understand the analogy of sheep. Remember, sheep are experts in discerning the voice of the shepherd. We too need to become experts in discerning the voice of the shepherd. For too long and too uh, many years, I've seen people um, discern the voice of the shepherd, and then they start hearing a stranger's voice. And then they, they're pulling and pulling, and pretty soon they're gone. Because they heard the wrong voice. It was the spirit, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit. That's right. Because the Holy Spirit promotes what? Unity. 
and the Holy Spirit promotes peace. Mm. And when that's not existent, that means a spirit, a stranger's voice is now speaking. That's right. Amen? Because we are all in one accord, right? Yes. We all are in unity and we all believe the same. We're in one mind. Yes. We're in one body. We're in one spirit. Jesus says, I wish that you were one as me and the Father are one. Why does he, why do he say that? Because he knew there was going to be times when the enemy would try to come in and bring a stranger's voice to deceive us. Right. My prayer for myself is that I never believe a lie from the devil. Because mm -hmm. the Bible says even the elect, if possible, will be or can be deceived. So what we do, we stay close to the word. Right. We stay close to the, and graze in the pastures where God has called us. Because sheep are content to graze in the pastures. We don't miss a feeding like the sheep don't want to miss a feeding, don't miss a meeting, because it's important for the unity in the body of, and the unity in the bond of the Holy Spirit here at the church. Sheep are important. Watch this. Let me finish up here. Verse 25. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. They will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. Amen. For my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. Amen. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The only way a sheep can be snatched is if they've been deceived or led astray. But even then, the Holy Ghost can still, if they're willing, can go get that sheep and bring them Amen. back into the fold. The only way they can be snatched is if they allow themselves to be snatched. Amen? Amen? Sheep. We need sheep. Amen. The true sheep. Jesus said, the sheep, a stranger's voice you will not follow, but the true sheep hear my voice. The true sheep follow the shepherd's voice. And when we speak the word here, because that's all we talk about here is the word of God, you hear the shepherd's voice because we're speaking his word, not our word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get some music, Pastor? Sheep. So yes, maybe if y'all can stand. It's good to be a sheep. If it were my choice, maybe I'd have been a sheep a little longer. But it wasn't my choice. The Lord said, no more sheep. You've been a sheep for a long time. <laughs> Time to be an under shepherd. Why? Because I've proved myself to be submissive. I've proved myself to be teachable. I've proved myself to be led. I've proved myself not to get ahead of God. I didn't even want a position. I never wanted a position. I was like, Lord, I just want to learn and learn and learn. I don't want no position, no position, please, no position. And you wake up and you have that intense burning desire to fulfill the call that God call, calls you to. So I know what it's like to be a sheep because I was one for many years. I was a good sheep. I was loyal sheep. I knew how to be led. I allowed myself to be sheared. I allowed myself to be, for the pastor to use the rod of correction on me. I allowed all those things and I'm grateful. Because I understand. Tonight the Lord just wants you to lift your hands. Just lift up your hands everybody right now.